Good evening, I'm Elaine Quijano. Welcome to CBSN Originals. Originals is our in-depth, long-form reporting on the major stories impacting the nation and the world. Tonight, we travel to the U.S. border with Mexico to talk to some Hispanic voters who represent a small but vocal minority, Latinos who want to see Donald Trump become the next president of the United States. We've gathered a panel of people from across the political spectrum to discuss Trump's unprecedented candidacy, but first, here's our report. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. I mean, he's not saying they were all rapists. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. I have family members that are involved in this stuff, and they are in a state jail at this moment, and I would love nothing better but for them to be deported. Mr. Trump has a point. There's no accountability of, of, of what they're doing. Uh, there's no accountability of what they've done. I'm Hispanic and I vote for Mr. Trump. You nice to too. See you. Hi, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. <laughs> I see you've got uh, your Trump sticker. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, they say if I'm Trumping, so I have to say yes every day I'm Trumping. <laughs> it's Trumping, what does that mean exactly? If, if, if I'm Trumping? just talking to people about Trump, uh, campaigning in any way about Trump, yeah. informing people mm -hmm. as far as their, as far as his policies are yeah. concerned, because a lot of people don't even give him the chance. Critics say, though, you know what, he's some, he crosses the line sometimes. He does cross that line, but at the same time, he's the only one that will cross that line. He's the only one that will say what's on people's minds, and it's working. It's working right now. Perform the duties of this party and prepare for our conventions and to change this country back to the way you want it to be. Lord Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You have family members who I are do have undocumented family. immigrants. They're family members from Mexico coming into the United States, doing what they were paid to do, and going back. What does that mean exactly? So illegal activity? Illegal activity as far as maybe, as far as maybe murdering somebody. Right now, sad to say this, I have my father sitting in jail. I live right on the border. So I am familiar with undocumented people coming through the backyard of my house. I am familiar with narcotic traffickers dumping dope next to my house, you know. And I, I participated in the arrest of these people. I was raised here, uh, you know, worked most of my life here. Uh, I was police chief here, you know, for many years. We got people actually, you know, tie ropes and, 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 and uh, repel down. We have people that drop dope and then they have somebody pick it up, especially on the Mondays and, and Fridays because of the amount of people that are here in the flea market days. So they, they made several apprehensions, these Border Patrol guys. I mean, they're extremely active in this area. People need to wake up and realize that the illegal immigrants that are here that have no form of other self-employment do turn to drugs, do turn to the cartel business. My opinion on the wall is that we definitely do need a physical barrier. There's a big uh, misperception that the Rio Grande River is a, is a natural barrier. Uh, that is completely false. That river does not stop drugs. That river does not stop the people coming across. One of the main issues that this country that we have had for so many years is what to do with the undocumented people that are already residing here in this country illegally. I have a social security card, you have a social security card, we, we're accounted. I have to pay IRS taxes when I'm due. I mean, and these people are, 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 are not paying any of those. I'm Mexican American, but I was raised here in the United States all of my life, my whole life. In late 50s, my father, my abuelito, my abuelita, mi tia, they came to America. And they did it legally. They did it legally. What do you think people get wrong about Hispanics in general when it comes to, uh, oh. you know, politics and assuming, oh, well, he's Hispanic, he must be he, against uh, Trump. Trump? A lot of uh, uh, Republicans do not 
show their, you know, their really true colors for whatever the reason is. They don't. They don't. I do. I've never been ashamed of being a. a, a uh, you think there are more like you, yes. more people who support yes. Trump they, who are... They just go and vote uh, a conservative. They just won't say it. He could get so much more support if he just openly walked the same streets and realized we have so many common interests in terms of securing the border, want to look at different alternatives. There's a, a, a whole crowd of people that completely support him, but that he's made it so difficult for them to be public, they won't put a yard sign, but they will quietly go in the booth because they think he can actually get something done. Okay, well, let's see how we're doing in New York. All right, Ooh, 69, 69. baby. 69? All right. My whole life, when I was going through the public school system, I would ask my teacher, what's the difference between a Republican and a Democrat? And they, the, the teacher's answer always was always the same. It was, you know what, mijo? You're, you're poor, you're Hispanic, you're a Democrat. And you know what? That's not true. Most of the time, the individuals who are supporters are in the business community. And they do a lot of business back and forth with Mexico. They could be realtors, they could be restaurant owners, and they just don't want to offend their customers. Because on the surface, so much of what Donald Trump has said is he's made a foil out of, like, Mexico. Who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico! 100%. Laredo is the only border town that Donald Trump has visited, and it's because you invited him. Our organization uh, is the only organization that actually represents uh, Border Patrol agents. So uh, when Donald Trump started making headlines out there, our agents started kind of voicing their opinion, and, and they were uh, reaching out to our organization and saying, you know what, uh, we like what Donald Trump is saying. We like that uh, he's, uh, he's for border security. So at that point, I decided to reach out to Border Trump so that he could get the, the real perspective uh, of, of what actually happens on the border. When you walked away from that meeting, was there something that you learned after having that opportunity to see him face to face that maybe you didn't know before you had that meeting? Well, it, it gave me an opportunity to actually uh, realize that, you know, Mr. Trump was real. You know, our country has, has kind of lost respect in, with worldwide uh, politics and standing and different uh, things, uh, military strength, uh, economic growth, employment. Uh, a big loss in the middle class and Mr. Trump's uh, presentations and things. He talks about these things, the things that are of great interest to me. A lot of strategists realized that if the Republicans could get 30% of the Hispanic vote mm -hmm. uh, back in the 90s, that they could win statewide elections. The Latino vote is critical for Republican success. You are a U.S. citizen, an American, but you consider yourself Mexican. Yes. Help me understand that, that as a U.S. citizen who considers himself Mexican, you don't take offense when you hear someone say, Mexicans are rapists, Mexicans are bringing drugs. I don't believe he's, he's, he's talking about a homeless. You don't feel insulted no, when you hear no. that? I consider Mr. Mr. Trump my amigo, or nuestro amigo, because he's trying to set you know, a, a, a procedure that will be legally followed by those people that want to become residents of this great country of ours. This is about vibrant trade, the economy, jobs, doing this legally, and helping with the narco problem and the drug problem. If you can understand those issues, then you'll realize we're just as American as everybody else. The whole concept of being Mexican-American, why is it that different ethnicities always put American second? We're Americans first. And uh, we're born Latinos, Mexican-Americans, whatever they want to call us and label us, uh, because of our ancestry heritage. But we're Americans, you know, so we're the same.